So, Alex, I would like you to repeat again the story you just told me about what happened to you last night in your bedroom. Okay. So last night I was asleep and I had to get up in the middle of the night. It was hot. I was sleeping naked and I had to go to the bathroom and I get up and I was kind of half asleep and so I'm like instantly I think oh shit there's somebody standing there in my room next to my closet and I was like well maybe it's just a shadow but then I was like no that's a person some somebody was there like a figure standing there and I instantly I don't know I was like on the move and I was in like fight mode and instantly was like who the fuck are you and reached out and then there was nothing there. And right instantly after that, I flipped on the light and I saw an old man with a beard. And it was just like in the movies, how they become transparent. And it was just like this image that was there and it just faded away and then it was just, nothing was there. And so, I mean, I, I mean, I, it could have been just me waking up and being like, I don't know, having some weird feeling but it scared the crap out of me. And I thought there was really somebody in my room and I was like covering up and being like, who the fuck are you? Cause it was like somebody was just watching me while I was in bed and I was really scary. When you, during that brief moment that you saw a, a human old right. man, did, did it move? Did he move? Did, did he seem more like a photograph fading away? Or did he seem like a person fading away, or was it? Did it just happen too quickly for I you? I mean, it to... happened fast. He didn't move really. I mean, I think it looked like he was maybe blinking or something. Like he didn't look like he was inert or something. But I mean, it was all very fast. So I, I didn't see him for more than maybe a second. But it was just like the outline of someone, and then it just kind of like disappearing. He didn't look like my Justin Bieber cut out there. I wish he did. I would have felt less weird about someone staring at me while I was naked in my bedroom that looked like Justin Bieber. <laughs> I'm Vince. Uh, we're about to go on a ghost hunt. I've got a Zoom recorder to capture any audio that we have, perhaps some EVPs. Uh, who knows? Hi, I'm Alex, and for the ghost hunt, I have my handy iPhone to take some pictures, as well as wearing some protective crystals. This is black tourmaline, and I made myself a little bone talisman to bring me extra luck. I'm Alexis and I brought a energy sensor that will tell where they are and a flashlight. Hi, I'm Diane and I have my ghost box with the speaker, my phone which takes better pictures than my camera, flashlights, and several tape recorders 
inside the haunt. Okay guys, all the spirits here. It's Diane, Alexis, and Vince, and I forgot her name. Alex. Alex <laughs> and Crow. Peter. Peter. And we are here to talk to you. And we are here to find out your story if you want to tell us. You guys know me. I've been down here with you guys for a long time. Okay, there is somebody in the room with us. Can you guys feel the cold? Or is it just me? It feels a little drafty. Is there a door open in the back? No. Okay, well just there you go. What are you feeling right now, Diane? Um, I'm feeling, well, they follow us from the time that we walk in the door because True. They're waiting when you walk in the door. They're there. And when I was talking to them, you could feel lots of, pre you know, just tons of presence. They're everywhere. And um, I would, you know, I really want to smile, guys. Should we introduce ourselves? Oh, there was one right there. Yeah, tell them a little bit about yourself and what you're doing here. My name is Vince. I'm here because I have an interest in things that a lot of people don't believe in. And I, I find everything here interesting. And I'd like if you find me acceptable to make yourself known. Alexis, what are you feeling? No, truthfully. Nothing? Okay. Marty. Hi! <laughs> How are you? Oh my god. Yeah. Nice to find you. Yeah, likewise. Yeah. Hi guys, you Hi. are? Uh, my name's Gary. Hi Gary. Hi. 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 Just a spiritual thug. I have a question for you. Um, yes. Yeah. So, uh, Marcus. Nice to meet you. Hey, guys. Hi, Marcus. It's good to see you. Good to see you. This is our cameraman, Peter. Hi, Peter. Cheers. I brought you guys some uh, talismans. So, basically, uh, what these do is they uh, protect from. Uh, um, pretty much all spirits that could be harmful to you, you know, any malevolent spirits. Okay. So I want to Here's one for you. I owe you twenty dollars. Oh, absolutely. Okay. What's the best way to keep these? Just in your pocket. It's fine. Your wallet. You know. They won't get melty or anything. Um, they probably won't. It's beeswax. I made a sigil on the first time. Yeah. Marzipan um, do these normally mean Hi. Hi there. people start I'm Miles. Kind of You're Miles? Yes, yeah, Diabolist Extraordinaire. And what do you do? I conjure demons. That is you conjure demons? And then How frequently? Oil, uh, um, at least once a moon cycle, I typically run into a problem that I'm going to have to conjure. For my, you know, which they're remarkably, remarkably ingenious little creatures. They're very good at what they do. They just like a little attention, a little affection from a human. Excellent. You know, they're not at the big baddies that people make about for, but feed them. You don't invite friends over to move a couch without ordering pizza. Or ordering pizza and beer yeah. and everything, right, Do right. The same thing for a demon, or for any spirit, really. Are, de are demons here to move our spiritual couches? So this yes, is also they this totally is are. They are the heavy lifters that, uh, in the metaphysical world. Increases. Pacific North Weird! Oh. I'm Vincent Zunza. And I'm Alex Sullivan. And today we are here with Marcus McCoy. Who is a spiritual mafia hitman, a <laughs> uh, an exorcist, a divine thug. Yes, yes, a divine and many thug. other things. Yes, many other things. Uh, I kind of practice I was trained and practiced uh, a form of South American Corinthianismo, uh, and that's kind of where I got my start um, in some of my formal training. 
uh, doing cleansings and things like that with people, uh, healing work. Um, and uh, I've just been studying everything that's available to me kind of eclectically for years. So trying to narrow down and label what I do is a little bit difficult when it comes down to it. Right. Well, what do you do? Well, right now I, uh, I worked in mental health for years and years and years, working on a psych ward and wrestling psychotic people to the ground. And then I busted my knee in Jan the end of January this year, and I couldn't uh, wrestle psychotic people to the ground anymore. So I decided to start wrestling psychotic dead people to the ground. They're a little bit easier for me to work with. And oftentimes they're already in the ground. Right, they're already in the ground, so yeah, it makes it easier. But uh, spirits, working with spirits that are malig malignant, malicious, uh, people that are dealing with spiritual infections and problems uh, of a spiritual nature, I can go in and do cleansings and remove spirits and uh, do whatever work is required of me at that level. So. Do you find that there is a common thread running between the people who tend to have these spiritual infestations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a um, kind of a continuous thread there that I've noticed, and a lot of it has to deal with um, spiritual hygiene, spiritual, moral, physical hygiene. Those all kind of like go in together. Um, kind of also kind of codes goes along with the uh, concept of the Greek virtues. Um, people that aren't living with some virtue end up getting a little bit dirtier than others, and uh, thus problems start to arise in their life. And so don't be a psychic slut is the lesson of this. No psychic slut shaming, okay? You don't right, want to do was that. Hateful. That was hateful, yes. <laughs> I feel kind of oppressed right now. Because... <laughs> Like some knees, my mind is open to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, that is kind of a common trend, and uh, we'll talk about some of the, the cases that I've had recently where um, uh, there were things going on in the house or things that they were going about in their spiritual practice that um, created some problems for them, or um, they just didn't focus on cleansing and protecting themselves and maintaining healthy boundaries in the spiritual world or in their interpersonal life and it ended up drawing things to them that was problematic. And sometimes it has nothing to do with the individual, uh, sometimes it's just the home itself, things that happened in the home or um, the home itself hadn't been cleansed after like a, a suicide or a death or things like that and it ends up drawing in uh, things that are like animals that eat or are drawn towards carrion, you know, like a dead animal or what have you. Um, uh, when you leave a mess out, it draws flies. Pacific North Wind! There's a lot of activity. This was known as a oil field. There's a lot of activity this was known as a old um, train station a long time ago. And the basement was thought to be where they would keep the dead bodies. So... Dead they, bodies that they found on the train? Yes. So, um, was that a common that's, thing? That's, yeah, in the olden days, like in the Victorian days, mm -hmm. they would um, put the bodies on the train and put them in the basement. So the other people outside wouldn't see them. So that's why there's a lot of activity down there. Right, and it's used in, in you start that uh, a Papanox oil. It's used in spirit summoning incense and things like that. So it's actually for the purpose of, of uh, bringing out spirits and are, are increasing their ability to have physical contact with the world. So I was going to see if anyone wanted to wear some and see if it increased the... Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean it is the... So this brings them to you? Yeah, it invokes spirits. It's used for spirit evocation and one of the reasons why that works is that it's, it's actually um, it kind of brings density or gives energy to them in a way of speaking so that they have more strength and more ability to be seen or interact with the physical world. Okay. Yeah. And so this incense actually has a lot of that in it as well. 
and it's made for the same purpose. Marcus, yeah. will you um, coat me with some of your fluids? <laughs> you, you want me to coat you with some of your fluids? <laughs> yes. You know how much I love doing that. He I need some of that too. too. It's about time we have a document of it. It's been in the shadows too long. <laughs> Alex, smell me. Oh, yeah. I make no promises. Like I said, just an experiment. Right. Um, okay. It's just a, a mild, alluring. Yeah. It it's, 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 it's a come hither scent. You're already ghost bait, as it yeah, is. Yeah, pretty so. much. <laughs> Spiritual friends of Diane and of the space, uh, soldiers that died uh, in foreign conflicts. I'm Marcus. And I'm here uh, to help out, and I have no ill intention. So it's nice to be here in your space. And this is my friend Gary, who helps me. Absolutely. I'm also here benevolently, just here to observe and to witness. Mm -hmm. And this is our friend Miles. I'm also here as a friend, bring good intentions. And definitely to witness some things, hopefully. Right. So, are we ready? Yeah, More than. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Pacific North Weird! Yeah, speaking of spirits, I noticed that you brought some alcohol. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, this is this is a pear and clavawashka clove mellow mel that uh, my lovely witchy lady and I made um, from. Uh, Honey, so it's it's like a mead, but made with fruit, and we harvested all of the pears ourselves, and rooted in with clavawashka, which is a aphrodisiac herb from the Amazon. So aphrodisiac herb from the Amazon. We're gonna be because that's how I for roll. a lot of spiritual activity. Yeah, I think I so. Think that's how I roll. Would you like me to open it? Why don't you? Yeah, right. That'd be great. And while you're doing that. I have a question. What's your question? <laughs> so do you think, do, are most of the spirits you encounter people who were once alive, or are there actual entities that were never alive that are demonic or... Well, when you, when you use the word de demonic, you know, that's, right. there's a... It's loaded. It's a loaded term. Um, there's the Christian demonization of literal demonization or turning um, nature spirits or beings that were just part and function of the spiritual landscape of life uh, that were called daemons which is spelled differently than demon and during you know the conversion from from Christianity or from paganism to uh, uh, Christianity, there's there's always a tendency to demonize the re the previous religion as being evil and all the spirits that were, you know, a part of it as being evil because people would work with these demons. They would pray to them. They would give them offerings, and they, you know, would work with them to um, better their lives. Um, uh, so. I'm not a Catholic, right. and I'm not a Christian, and so I don't have that moral dualism. So yes, to answer your question, there are beings that aren't human, but that doesn't mean that they're not connected to the natural world in some way, shape, or form. Because right. demon is a term that people, or a certain sect of people, use for them. Right, and you know, if you've been treated like a demon, you might start acting like a demon, you know, for thousands of years, you know, if you're maligned and ignored and... Like a, a and human spirit can be turned into a demon? Well, I, that's a good question, actually. And, um... That requires alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> um... A good thing, you know, alcohol is a great example, actually. You know, alcohol to some people is a demon. And that's, me into a demon. Right. That's how <laughs> I mean, that's how they that's how they relate to it. Alcohol's the devil, you know. Other people have a really positive relationship with alcohol and it's not the devil to them. Right. right? Well some people can handle their alcohol and have two glasses and be responsible. That's true. Some people 
right? And some people can Go drink crazy. two bottles of wine and it's still okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, it's and okay. Some people yeah. can't Sorry. deal with it at all. all right. Yeah, it's, like, it's true. So, like with demons, and yes, it, like in Buddhism, it's really interesting. Uh, they have demons in Buddhism, but a demon in Buddhism is actually a human spirit or human that has uh, basically bought into the delusion of the ego to such a degree that they actually become an ego which is like you know the roots of, of suffering basically so they, they buy into like um, this uh, the sources of anger, hatred, uh, avarice. fear, yeah, avarice, all these like different things. Of the sinners, right, the right. Are they like those? Right. And I like that college concept. kids who are always really, really into Ayn Rand. <laughs> <laughs> some of them. Some of them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This smells really good. Exit. Exit. Existentialist, uh, nihilistic, heroin addict punk kids have a tendency to become demons, I think. Really? I th just in my experience. We're gonna have a whole crowd oh, in a couple we, years. We gotta find <laughs> some of them. <laughs> I know plenty. <laughs> Here, here's to demon hunting. Yeah. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you, Marcus. School. I have a question for you. <laughs> well, what do you think first? This is our home brew. My question for you was, how did you make such an amazing... <laughs> I mean, this is devilish. No, it is good, because most is meat good. is, like, kind of cloyingly sweet, and this is, like, acceptably, like, it's good. Good, I'm glad. Pacific North Weird. 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 So what was this uh, building used for, and... Uh, why is it uh, haunted? Place that are yeah. Um, it was a way station for the dead during World War One, Two, in Vietnam. Mm. They so would bring them they here, bring the bodies. here, uh -huh. leave them here, and then when their train going to their hometown or city would come, they'd load them back on and send them on. And there's also been um, apparently there was a woman who committed suicide upstairs somewhere, like in the 30s. Mm -hmm. This is a very large building, like the, this is like what, the Tacoma Mall area, or what? Well, or, Tacoma Dome's right up there. Right, so what is this building called, this whole thing? Freight House Square. Or Freight House Square, right. And not the, the entire building wasn't used for that purpose, correct? No, just down here. This was the more... So, well, Peter's that. camera, the, the nice cannon we just got, went off in the middle of recording. I've got an extra battery right here. It seems he's got it taken care of, but that's something that just happened. Uh, but I, I see him and I ask him to come talk to me or yeah. sit with me. Uh -huh. And in this room here... And when they're talking to you, are you, are you talking about passive thought or are you getting it from your box? No, yeah, passive box. thought. Passive thought, yeah. yeah. So what kind of things are they communicating to you while you're here? No, well, some of them are happy, some of them are bored, pick up a lot of sadness. Uh -huh. um, this room is very, very active, but it's the end of the hallway. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, um, who's up for um, doing a ghost box session? I guess we got it in here. It's a ghost box. So ghost boxes are used by paranormal investigators as a mode for communicating with spirits. Um, it uses alternating uh, radio frequencies, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I would be happy to do a ghost box experiment. Yeah, this is our morgue. So I'm gonna borrow your table, Jana. This, this is a real coffin, and yep. somebody made it a cooler. That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. That's brilliant. Good thinking. There aren't any coffin nails <laughs> from the original barrels. What? You have no clue how valuable those. Actually, right now it's at zero zero. Okay, all right. But it's seventy one degrees. Okay. And I'm gonna get my ghost box out. And we'll see if we can pick up the people that were angry with us about having a haunt here. Having a what? 
the last time Gina was with me. Um, how did they put that, Gina? That's what I was trying to remember. I, I think he him. said, he said, we do not, um, no haunt here. Mm. My home. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of got told. And it just kept on repeating uh, over and over. So a ghost box is going to pick up signals yes. that they're giving words. out? <laughs> you have to pick words out after you ask questions. So um, who would like to start with questions? No. How about Vince? Vince, why don't you report? I'd love to start. Uh, Hi, my name is Vince. I'm with a YouTube show called Pacific North Weird. And if you'd like to say anything, we would love to hear it. You guys have to listen really hard. Loud words out. Not the right thing. What he's got. That they're cold. Um, you, can you tell us your name, please, hon, so we know who we're speaking with? What is risky, hon? Turning. Turning to me? Are we risking turning into you? Is your name Charlie? Are our lives about to conclude? <laughs> Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> Okay, how many of you are trying to speak through this at one time? Only one at a time, otherwise it's all mixed up. Cheryl? Okay, Cheryl, um, what would you like us to know, hon? Destroy, but destroy what, hun? Really? Back in the forties. Okay. So you've been here since the forties. Were you killed in World War Two, hun? You've been scared recently, too. I was. I had a full-bodied apparition experience. Where? In my room. Mm -hmm. I had woken up in the middle of the night, and I walked up suddenly, and I got the sense like, oh, it looks like somebody's standing near my closet. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm probably just seeing a shadow. And then I like took a step or two, and I'm like, no, somebody's there. And my instant reaction was just this sort of like panic because I'm like imagining, oh, somebody's broken into the house and is going to try to like rape or murder me and I'm going to have to like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And so I went and was like, who are you? And went like that and there was no physical body there. But you could still see him? But I could still see him. And I went and turned on the light and it was an old man in like logger clothing mm -hmm. with a beard. Still there. Was still there for, the like, for like a second or two as he faded away. Did he see you? Did he respond facially? He just blinked he a just lot. blinked a lot. No, but anyways, it scared me. Yeah. Nothing auditory? No, but I did feel very, I don't know. 
I could have just been waking up in like a semi dream state. That's mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. But it was very like I was instantly in that fight or flight mode. Sure. And was like so faded. I'm a real strong believer in setting like protective spiritual boundaries around your home uh -huh. so that the only thing that's able to come into your home and out of your home right. is by invitation and or uh, beings that are extraordinarily beneficial kind of like can walk in and out as well. Okay. Um, so I'm a big big fan of that and I advise, you know and I actually do that for people as well. Um, but the experience you had, I mean, that's that's a clairvoyant experience. Clairvoyance means like clear seeing, right? You know, clear audience is clear hearing, uh, clear sentience is clear knowing. knowing. Um, and you can practice all those things. You can develop like skills in those areas. Some people are way more naturally uh, apt to be able to do that. Being right obsessed by a ghost or a demonic force. Obsessed, like preyed upon. Yeah. Leached. Yeah. I'm a tasty morsel, a, a paranormal pastry, I'm a kooky confection, a bit of spooky spaghetti. Spaghetti? That was weak. Yeah, it was. I am, I am feeling, yeah. I feel that this room is really kind of a, a vortex. Should we stay here for a while? There's actually a... I'm actually, my legs are tingling. Like the hairs on my legs are standing up on it. We've had two actors in here and one actor had her phone plugged in. We had an extension cord and she had to leave because her phone was disconnected and thrown. But her and Tammy were the only two females or people at all in here at the time. And that is why Tammy will not stay in here by herself. Yeah. I think we should spend some time in this room. I think they should. Mm -hmm. So do you want to sit down, everybody? Or, or just stand? Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. What do you suggest, yeah, yeah, Marcus? I'm going to want to spend the night down here. He does remember me as well. and ever kind of trance out and let them communicate through you? Mediumship? Yes. Do you yeah. do that? Yeah. But, uh, <coughs> what's that banging noise? There's oh, there's people upstairs. There's bowling alley upstairs. There's something weird going on over here. Probably. Yes. What's going on? Every time I put my camera on a little spot on the curtain, the light goes off. The light goes off. The light on my camera stops working, and when I move it away from it... Vince, that's where my leg was, uh, the leg was for No, right here, watch it. Yeah. Oh, right here, see, here. it stops. When I move it over here, it's fine. It doesn't stop or go off, but when I do it right here, there, it goes off. It's like malfunctioning right in this spot. I do do that, Diane, but I don't. It, uh, going up again. I don't talk to anybody but my own guides. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, yeah because my guides getting pretty. Uh, Why is it going on? I don't know what you should call it restless right now. Uh, well, I, yeah, you can talk to your. The camera guys. light is perfectly fine. When I have it pointed highly, anywhere else, I highly suggest it's, it's working. It's on. It's working fine. Strange. See? It's not going off. Well, uh -huh. we'll do a count. Is this your screen? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, so on. It's still yeah. on. 
I put it on here. Yeah. It just goes off yeah. when I point it right there. Yeah. Trippy. I'm not pressing a thing on the camera. Uh, this, this is exactly where I was standing when the, the hairs on my legs started. Like, just totally tangling. And they're doing it again. I feel good in this room, though. Like, it's good. Of course you do. <laughs> of course I do. It's because you're evil. Oh. Well, that explains it. feel like it's a good spirit or a bad spirit? Everything's a good spirit compared to everything. What? <laughs> 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 it's it's cold. It's cold. That is weird, though. Oh, there it goes. Dude, one. it just happened again. I had this camera out here for at least two minutes, and the light never went off. And when I point it here, it just periodically goes dead, like so. Anywhere else, the light is just fine. But when you shine it at that, the light goes off? Yeah, watch. Everyone's See? been doing that for the last 20 minutes. Yeah. Do you guys all take pictures over there? Oh, we got it all filmed. We got it all documented. We've been, we've been busy here. Yeah, like been trying to. Flash See, it keeps doing it when I point it there. When I point it here at you or up here. Or at Alex here, holding the flashlight. Or at Peter, holding the camera, filming us. The light is fine. Let's put it back here. Goes off. Goes back on. Well, I think the thing that's interesting about this room as well is that the, it's, it's a bunch of sheets. Right? And so the, <clears throat> the veil and lifting the veil or piercing the veil has always been uh, very symbolic of uh, spirit contact. Entering into the spirit world, so the very act of going through the sheets. Do you tend to find that spirits enjoy metaphors? I believe that the metaphors are actually deep archetypes that we actually really resonate with and that they create shifts in our own consciousness. Marcus, 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 Marcus. I am really interested in the rest of the bottles you have here on the table. Explain. Yes, so, um, I'm a, I studied, uh, the, uh, uh South American Corinthianismo practice of Perfumerismo. And that's like, a. um, particular practice that works with extracting plants for their aromatic properties and their spiritual properties and you work with them in specific ways for accomplishing sp particular spiritual or magical tasks. Um, so these different plants that are extracted into the perfumes and the different extracts are like my helpers. They're people that I, and I mean people other than human people that I become allies with and we work together on a spiritual uh, plane. And, and so <clears throat> one of the classic ones uh, that's worked with in, in a lot of different spiritualist traditions is Florida water. Um, this is a Peruvian Florida water that uses actual cane alcohol. Uh, so you can actually put it in your mouth and it's not toxic to you and it actually uses the essential oils of the plants whereas the stuff that's sold in the americas or in north america is uh really cheap and they use a, like a methanol and yeah, a toxic type of wood alcohol and uh, um, also works with scent chemicals instead of the, the plants themselves so i get this imported from Peru. Uh, oh, aren't you Mr. Fancy Little I, I, Cultist? I, 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 um, little Lord. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fancy parent. So, uh, the other one is, is a... Uh, and oh, So, this is actually utilized um, by putting in your mouth and you spit it out. And uh, What do you spit it onto? Uh, people. Onto people. their faces? Uh, and, yes, into their faces or and around their bodies. And it just depends. And like, uh, uh, usually you want to aerate the perfume around their entire body uh, so that it's basically uh, blessing their energy body, uh, their spirit. And 
and uh, strengthening it, and cleansing it, uh, and allowing the plants to get all around you and, and do their work. And so <clears throat> this is a very cleansing uh, perfume and it also empowers and invigorates uh, the person's energy body. One of the things I also do is I'll take a bottle like this, for example, an empty wine bottle, and I'll turn that into a spirit trap. And I always bring those to all of the different house glazes. You're like MacGyver. Kind of. <laughs> that sounds spiritual spooky. MacGyver. Wait, how is it that so do you have like a little genie in a bo bottle afterwards? Yeah. Do you trap them in there? Yeah, they're it's trapped like a in gin? there. gin? They are totally trapped in there. And actually the gin, that whole it's story of, yeah. of, of gins and spirits getting trapped in bottles, there's a long it's history of that. Of you. In multiple cultures, they, there's different things like boxes, you know, the Daibuk box. You know, the die books are the just, Jewish yeah, demons yeah. that eat babies. Right. Well, what you do you just eat? keep them on your shelf, though, and be like, oh, I feel like I could use this guy tonight. I'm going to pop it open. Yeah, you can. Awesome. You can actually get their name and their sigil, and you can, you can use just them to do all these like, various deeds. You, but so I don't do that. you could send a bottle with okay. a particularly nasty demon to someone you don't like, and they open it up, like, oh, thanks, Marcus. And then all of a sudden, they're <laughs> fucking their, their neighbor's dog. Well, I don't know about the dog part, but yeah, essentially, you've got the, the you gist of it. You could unleash or negative could, energy on I them, could like open, a weapon, yeah. like a Molotov cocktail, but with right. demonic entities. But you would want to keep the bottle, and you'd want to, like, send that spirit out to people and do malicious So you just, like, things. uncork it off? You hear it? that, Cliff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got powers, y'all. He's got powers. <laughs> I think we're running near the end of the investigation, having just had a, an unusual experience in a room full of novelty bloodied sheets. However, as you'll see, there was an anomaly with the light on the camera. Uh, Alex, you said you you felt good there? I thought I felt good energy. Like I felt pretty serene, but I felt that kind of tingly like like you just did a bunch of yoga. You know what I mean? <laughs> no. <laughs> I actually don't. No. Okay, well that's what it feels like. Like you just got out of a good meditation jam. Do you feel like there was something else in the room with you or was it just a something about the energy? There was a different charge to the room maybe? Yeah, I felt a good charge. I don't I didn't sense like an actual physical entity or right. know, a spirit per se. Not that I know that I would know what that would feel like, but you know. Like doing a bunch of yoga? Yeah, if that's what it feels like, then for sure I, <laughs> I sensed it. But if not, then... What's your take on the camera light anomaly that we just experienced there? Gosh, it's so weird. Because at first I thought maybe, because it seemed like when you would move it, a little up or down I thought it might be some kind of like it was trying to focus or something mm -hmm. but then I tried it and you could literally do that to a different part of the room the exact same move a different sheet and it would be fine but when you did it to there or if you just held it still for a while it would just blink off and turn on again it was really bizarre sometimes in rapid succession yeah and it was something like you could do it over and over again it's not like whoa this weird thing happened once man you should have been there to see it no it's like you could do it and go like okay it's did it again yeah that's what was particularly unnerving about it to right. me is that it was repeatable right it was and like a scientific we knew it would experience. keep on happening right. if we held the camera at this one spot the light would flicker and turn off for right. no reason this way we found a picture uh -oh. of a woman's face that was fairly convincing. Uh -huh. Marcus has a picture of a convincing woman's face. We All better us. go. <laughs> what would you uh, suggest to to paranormal novices like Alex and myself, if we were to uh, do some sort of protective cleansing Pacific ritual. North weird cleansing ritual, circle of sacredness, of protection, if we were to put a large condom over her house to keep out 
grumpy, weird old logging men. Watching me sleep when I'm sure. naked. Sure. Yes. What, sure. What, what's There's a really great do? traditional witchcraft book um, by Paul Hewson called Mastering Witchcraft. And it's, it's an oldie but a goodie. And um, he's great. And this book's been around, I think, since the 70s. I can't remember the date that it was originally published, but. Uh, there's some rituals for protection in there that are highly effective, and uh, we've done them at every house that we live in, and we don't have any problems. What's one that Alex and I could do? Well, it's it's really easy. It's called a, it's the Hertha uh, protection ritual, and there's this old Germanic proto-Germanic goddess named Hertha, which is kind of a goddess of the earth. Um, uh, she's been connected to like Freya and some other deities as well that kind of led into like the Norse and uh, Scandinavian traditions but so she's there's an egregore behind this ritual a lot of people have done this ritual this and so she's this, this god form is used to being worked with and, and, and reciprocating uh, help to those that do this ritual and it's highly effective and um, basically you take an egg and you have an athame or a knife, and you or a sacred dagger that's been sanctified and ritually used, and you have the egg in one a specific hand and the knife in another specific hand, and you walk around your property um, three times while doing this invocation to Hertha, and kind of visualizing um, this barrier of protection around it, and then. Um, <clears throat> And there's a little bit more invocation to her and things like that that you do. And then you have a sanctified, ritually sanctified box. It's been painted black on the inside and the outside. And you have a black article of clothing that you that is yours that you um, that you wrap the egg in, and then you seal the egg inside of the box, and then you bury the box um, outside of your property or underneath of your home or underneath of your hearth. Um, or in some alignment with your hearth. Uh, uh, if you don't have a hearth, then that's fine. When you're in an apartment here, and, and you got a hearth. We we got a we got a motherfucking hearth. All right, no, let's don't get, even have. don't even get started. Yeah, yeah. Don't try to tell so I, I am up to I'm up to my waist in the hearth. In hearth. So you don't actually break the egg. You just you don't break the carry egg. Carry it around with your ritual. No. Breaking the eggs is a knife. different ritual process and okay. involved for all kinds of different things. But this one, you just take this egg and you plant it, uh, bury it in the ground outside of your home. It's good or else it would smell like right. eggs. Right. And you bury it and you make sure that it's going to stay there and not be disturbed. Um, you can put something over it or what have you. But it's a really highly effective ritual and there's lots of them. There's lots of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're back again. Pacific North Weird, I am Vince. This is demonic exorcist thug Marcus. Uh, our uh, afterlife fluffer, as it were. He is about to... Um, afterlife hitman. <laughs> ab to, he is about to um, coat, cleaner. coat my face with some Florida water to ensure my um, spiritual hygiene. Yeah, to cleanse your body and to actually, you know, like smooth things out and strengthen your your immune system, you know, like spiritually speaking. I'm ready. All right. Hi, I'm about to get spat on. 
or Pacific North Weird by Sp Marcus. Sprayed. Okay. I spray you. Don't know if that's any better, but okay. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I feel great. I feel invigorated. And uh, thank you for allowing me to share a little bit of my tradition and practice uh, with y'all. So, thank you. Thank you. This has been great. You're going to go straight home and beat off, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, we are outside of Alexandra's home, somewhere near Chehalis, Washington. And we are about to do a house protecting ritual to solve my ghost problems. To the goddess Hertha. It's a protection ritual. Yeah. That will get rid of that, uh, that pervy old bearded <laughs> ghost in your room. <laughs> At least I hope so. So uh, to make sure you all get the, the ultimate um, effect, we are uh, affixing a ritual headdress via GoPro headband camera to Alex's head so you will get a Hertha ritual POV and be right in the moment as we as we bless this home and make sure Alex is never bothered again. So mode it be. So mode it be. Looks good. So with Alex's GoPro third eye intact, we are about to begin this ritual, which will involve her first putting some salt into that water there, which she has already done. She will then light some Tellurian incense, and then we will circle the circumference of her home, chanting the prayer to Hertha while she holds a fertile egg and a knife. This will basically create a protective circle around the home. Are you ready, Alex? I'm ready. I will perform this ritual in honor of Hertha. In Hertha's name, here's our ritual athame, our ritual blade, and here is our fecund egg symbol of fertility, rebirth. Something Hertha can really go for, I suppose. Hertha, great one, mother of all life, who gives birth to all and renews her Lord the sun each day, who bestows himself on all men equally. Guardian of sky and sea, all power and potencies, through your might alone all nature falls silent, then sinks into sleep. You bring back the light to dispel the darkness, and only once more to cover us most safely with your shadows. You in whose hand rests everlasting chaos, ever wind, rain, and storm, at whose word oceans roar, who chases away the light and stirs up the tempest, and at whose whim sends forth a joyous day again. Ever faithful sustainer of all life, when our souls depart, they fly to your keeping, thence to return again. Rightly you are called Great Mother of All, for you conquer by your name alone. Source of strength for all men and gods, without you naught is born nor perfected. 
I call upon you, ruler of creation. I call upon you as divine. I call upon your holy name. Hertha, be, be pleased to grant that which I ask. Protect this house and home and all who live therein. So shall I always thank you with due faith. Pacific North Weird! Gosh, Alex, that sure was a scary episode of Pacific North Weird. It sure was, Vince. We learned so much about ghost hunting. We sure did. I'd like to thank Diane Wilkins from the Tacoma Paranormal Society for taking us on a legitimate ghost investigation. And I'd like to thank Marcus McCoy for teaching us how to deal with my little ghostly problem. That sure was nice of him. It sure was. And now, Olympia-based band LZRD is going to perform an original song for us, Giving Up the Ghost. Well, suck my mossy rock.
有。